Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of the Ron T Show. Uh, something new. Music. Oh, 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 music. Eric Kruger from Sunday Flood will be joining us in a little bit. Uh, this episode's a real big love letter to the Milwaukee music scene, so I hope you enjoy it. Check out some bands we talk about. Incidentally, this episode was recorded the day Lou Reed died, and we never really touched upon it uh, and how much of a, an effect it had on both of us. Um, what you may not know is I'm kind of a music snob, and I'm into a lot of uh, different things when it comes to music. So, without further ado, here's Eric Kruger from Sunday Flood. Cool. All right, we're recording. Fantastic. Are you on Wi-Fi, or are you uh, connected to a hard line? I'm on Wi-Fi. Okay, that yeah, should work. It should be fine. Should cool. Work. Hope right. so. All right, well, here's, here's, some, here's some film stuff for you. Eric Kruger, thank you so much for being on the program. That's very last minute, I understand, but uh, I really appreciate you uh, stopping by, as it were. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. So now we've known each other since... its I don't even know. I can't think. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Mid-90s, maybe? Late-90s? Something like that? Only Airplanes Count era? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, like a mid-high school type of thing, yeah, maybe? Right, right. It's been, uh, wow, over 15 years. But we've never actually met in person, so this is actually kind of the first time we've, we've actually are speaking face-to-face. -face. Yeah, it's better late than never, though. Exactly. Even, we're on, you know, on the internet, it's cool, whatever. In person, it's going to be better, though, for sure. Of course. Now, uh, let's go back, 1995, that's when Sunday Flood uh, was formed. Mm -hmm. uh, how did they, how did you guys all come together? Let's, let's have a history lesson for those uninitiated. Well, um, I guess long story short, we, uh, we met in high school and, um, you know, basically just had common interests and had a love for a lot of uh, similar bands and, and got together in, in our guitar player's basement and, you know, decided to make a record. And um, next thing you know, we ran into uh, Only Airplanes Count on the internet and decided to go on tour and we kind of just kept things going, making records over the years and um, just having fun, so... And now, what kind of what uh, back then? I know everyone's musical taste changes, probably save for a couple bands, because I know it's 2013, and I'm still a huge Pearl Jam fan. So yeah, that's, you know, yeah, um, no, yeah. What what back then? What inspired you to start, and has that changed over the years? Um, well, I guess you know, really, there's there was a handful of bands that we had mutual interest from. There's a lot of local bands in the area from the Fox Valley. Um, that we all really liked a lot. Vacuum Scam, Vesicular Basalt, um, Covent Garden. They were all kind of Appleton, Green Bay, Fox Valley area bands. And, um, you know, bands like Quicksand and Sunny Day Real Estate and Hum and, um, you know, just kind of even going back to like Led Zeppelin. There was a lot of just, you know, kind of common ground um, bands that we really liked and respected a lot. And there were some influences from all of them into um, just our own type of things. We were learning how to play our instruments. And because, uh, you know, we were kids, we were 16, 17, 18 years old. And, um, you know, we just kind of got in the basement and just we had no goals or expectations of what we were going to do. We just let the music flow. And, and that's what we did. And that's kind of what we've done to this day. So I'd say the influences are still the same. You know, granted, there's some new ones along the way after you've been in band for 18 years. But, um, yeah, it's just all been it's been about having fun. So, all right now, what uh, lately a lot of uh, the music scene has changed. Mm -hmm. um, Milwaukee used to be this hotbed of like the uh, I hate using this word, but the emo bands. Uh, I, I think that uh, a lot of it, the good ones, there's a bunch of good ones that came out of the Wisconsin scene. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, for solo, you know, only airplanes count became for solo forward, and they left all that kind of stuff behind. And then emo became a dirty word, right? You know, and uh, everybody started wearing uh, eyeliner and uh, <laughs> and yeah. tight, tight, tight pants. Right. Everybody forgot to, the, the the dress code is whatever Jeremy Enoch's wearing this week. No, I'm just kidding. Right. But right. Uh, but uh, I mean, is that has the scene changed? Do you think uh, in your eyes, or do you think it's just kind of what is let loose on the mainstream is what's yeah, changing? Yeah. Yeah, I guess everything's changing, you know, as you get older, you start just, um, you know, being affected by different things and, and, you know, you start listening to different things and things, you know, affect you differently, you understand different things. Um, we've never identified with any real scene, you know, we were never, we were maybe too heavy for the emo kids and we were too, 
you know, I don't know what you call it, melodic for the hardcore kids. And um, But the bottom line was that we always made friends with some really talented bands, you know, like Four Stella Ford, Only Our Planes Count, and, um, 1956, and Disguised as Birds, and Call Me Lightning. And um, that was really cool. We were able to, you know, just kind of trade shows and, and play around wherever we could, be it, you know, um, in the state or Midwest or wherever we could go. So that's been kind of our thing, you know, ever since, really, I guess. Yeah, I don't know, like the whole mainstream emo thing always like seemed to change the word, you know, went from Sunday Day to, you know, Jimmy Eat World to whatever band that was fresh and I kinda lost track on that. I only just followed the bands that I really got into. So It's oh speaking of Jimmy Eat World, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I think that they've kind of yeah, lost their touch. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, I would say. I mean it seemed like they were kind of um you know, I don't know what the right way to describe it is, but mainstream maybe change their, they got just into pop songs and, and playing hooks, which is fine, but I just was a little bit more um, in touch or, or identified with like clarity and things like that, you know, 1999, like that sort of time, time frame for them. So, so one of my favorite songs by them is for me, this is heaven. So oh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good, that uh, clarity, I think. And it's sad to say that clarity was their high point. Yeah. It's really sad to say that, but, right. uh, well, and that's the thing is I just had a conversation with someone who said that anything after Vitology by Pearl Jam is, is bad. And yeah. I was just like, I think that's when they really found their groove and they got good. I would agree with that. Uh, I, have you, have you heard Lightning Bolt yet? I've heard just a couple of songs. I haven't picked it up yet. It's so good. That's, that's awesome. It's just, oh man. I think, I, I think it's hilarious with them though. They kind of had uh, spinal tap syndrome with the drummers. Right, no kidding. You know, and then they, and then they're like, you know what? Let's just borrow Soundgarden's. He's not doing anything right now. Yeah, and he knows what he's doing. So. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but uh, what are, what are you listening to now? Um, a bunch of stuff. Um, I don't know. I've been really lately. I've been into um, Ben Taylor, James Taylor's kid. He's got a few solo records, so that kind of throws people off because you know, I'm in the I'm in a handful of different bands that you know range from heavy to um, not so much, you know, more acoustic driven and Ben Taylor's been um something I've been listening to a lot lately. Um besides that, I've actually just been diving back into uh, the 1956 catalog just because they they reunited. So, um not that it ever left my rotation really, but right. it's been inspiring again to know that those guys have knocked the dust off and are doing things again. So that's really cool. It's uh have you checked out uh, mkepunk.com? I have, absolutely. I'm a big fan of that website. It's awesome. It absolutely. really is. Yeah, a lot of lost gems that are making their way back to people's minds. So like like the, cool. the, the four-way split with, uh, what was it, Tintoretto and uh, uh, Monagra was, no, Monagra came from Tintoretto, or Tintoretto came from, I can't fucking remember. Yeah, but they're both on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's one of those things, but uh, yeah, that, I love that site, so Marty's doing a good job with that. Absolutely. And speaking of that site, um, you know, as far as influences, you're talking about what I've been listening to. There's this band from Oshkosh called Haunted Heads. They're pretty much one of my favorite bands, you know, local or whatever you want to call it, national. And it's made up of four guys from Oshkosh, and I've been trying to get them to submit all of their back catalogs to Martin at MKE Punk because there's so many different bands that were um, vital from Oshkosh, like around here that we all love, Chinoski and Crayon Black and um, Drop Dead Giants and um, The Willis and Shelf Life. They're just basically Haunted Heads is like this conglomeration of all these guys who have been in all these just groundbreaking bands from that area. And uh, hopefully they're going to submit that stuff because I think the rest of the people who follow that site will love it. So, Well, that's good because I, I, yeah, there's so many bands from like Racine even that uh, uh, showed up on there that I hadn't heard in forever. Like, uh, like, yeah. like Dead Flyboy. It's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, it's great. There's there's things that you may have never heard of because, you know, you just weren't, you know, maybe you couldn't drive at the time and you couldn't get to a show. You know what I mean? Like, there was that sort of thing. So it's cool to just have that um, and see the lineage of all the, the, the rock, you know, from right. state and beyond. So it's really cool. Yeah, it's a great idea for a site. I, I really miss the um, how, shows at houses. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, oh, man, like Bremen Street. And all that kind of stuff. That was awesome. Um, yep. Now it seems like everybody's graduated to the Cactus Club because it's pretty much the only venue that still kind of houses this kind of music sure. in a way. Yep. Um, 
do you think do you, do you ever think back and just kind of reminisce about that kind of time and been and, and thought to yourself things were so much different then absolutely i mean it's you know there was a different type of i guess aesthetic to you know what people were doing and it was very just um you know there there was not necessarily this need to to feel like you had to you were obligated to fill a bar because the owner was expecting you to you know um, get them business at a house. It's just a bunch of friends and then their friends and people you don't know and they're filling in a basement or whatever small tiny dirty space and just they're just there for the songs. Right, and I think right. a lot of people forget about that at a bar where you know you can be separated from the bar and the actual show and you can go and just get drunk and not pay attention and you know you're trying to get people to come in the other room and check out you know your friend's band who is amazing that they've never heard before and you know that sort of thing. So. Um, there's still some some um, DIY houses up in the valley that are a lot of fun to play, but it's just one of those things where I think that, you know, yeah, it, I miss it for sure. I wish it was more a part of what we do. Yeah, that was a, a house show was actually the first time I ever uh, heard of Carso. Oh, yeah, awesome. And I, I still listen to that little three-song EP that they put out. Yep, yep. I still listen to it now, and it's been oh, 20 years. Yeah, and that split with Fair Cat. Yes. Amazing. Oh, I remember the one song I listened to. I was like, it sounds like the theme to Knight Rider. Yeah, it was so good. Yeah. I just, oh, man. And then now they be, they became Call Me Lightning, right? Well, Nathan did. Nathan came from a car, so yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. So I haven't lost my mind completely. Yeah, okay. yep. well, there's that connection for sure. I may be losing my hair, but I haven't lost my mind. Oh, I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh, that's that's the worst thing is you sit there and you you talk you, you talk to people about you know these old shows you used to go to and how everything was great and you'd have to find a friend who could drive and and you know convince him to go and now our biggest worry is making the mortgage payments and uh, losing our hair. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a horrible thing. So what's uh, what's going on with Sunday Flood? What's what's the, what's next for you guys? Well. um... Our guitar player, Mike, moved back to Minneapolis last August, so he's been out there for about a year and a half, so we've been doing the long-distance thing. Um, he just got a new job out there, so um, basically what we were doing is the three of us in Appleton are writing songs, and Mike is writing songs, and we're trying to just find the right times where we can you know, practice and play out. And um, we're actually playing our first show since March um, next weekend in Appleton at the Maritime. It's a benefit for the owner. Um, so it's a pretty pretty cool thing, cool event, and it's it's um, it's a bar that's been really good to us for the last. I don't know. We started playing there probably about ten years ago. So um, that's our our near term goal. And then you know the next one would be just getting in, you know another record out as soon as possible. Right. So well, regionally whenever we can. But do you do you remember when you had to record on eight tracks? Absolutely. Oh man. We, and everything. I mean, you know, boom boxes to whatever, and we just let, you know, we try to record wherever we can, and you know, uh, yeah. time just flew by. You know, yeah. it just kind of left everybody in the dust. Absolutely. But uh, well, I thank you so much for being on, and yeah. uh, and we're gonna take a break here, and we're gonna come back with uh, a clip of a performance from Sunday Flood. So you guys stick around uh, if you haven't already turned it off because I'm just not very pretty today. I don't know what, what's going on with that. So It's Sunday. Don't worry about it. Exactly. <laughs> so, so that was the interview uh, with Eric, and it was awesome, I think. I'm just tooting my own horn. Toot, toot. Uh, but a little treat for you guys. A live version of the song Asperius uh, off of their new Sunday Club's new record. Um, please feel free to enjoy next week on the program Jody Lauren Miller. Uh, we talked to her about Skittered. Skittered. It's a lot of fun. Got a lot, uh, a lot more cool guests coming up as well. Uh, we have uh, BG McDonald from Hatchet 3 and the new Penance Lane. Uh, it's going to be coming out. We have uh, Anthony Melton from Bloody Cuts. We have, uh, oh geez, who else? Sean Whalen. I know the name doesn't ring a bell. But when you see him, you'll know who he is. Uh, and hopefully a, a lot, lot more. So stay tuned. Uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook, The Ron Pertee Show. Uh, at Ron Pertee. And uh, please help get the word out. It would uh, be much appreciated. And that's probably the most sincere moment I've had on film ever. Yeah. We'll see you next week. And start from the
Thanks a lot.